All right, this is fifth grade, module five, lesson four. And in this lesson, we're going to continue calculating volume, but this time we're going to start moving towards using that standard algorithm. Hopefully, however, we're going to make uh, help students understand why the, the rule, the algorithm makes sense rather than just give them a, a rule uh, to blindly follow. So let's get started. All right, so this says each rectangular prism is built from centimeter cubes. State the dimensions and find the volume. Now, parents and teachers, we don't want to just uh, give a, a rule for the students to blindly follow. So what we want to do is use this picture to show why the rule makes sense. So teachers, uh, you may want to build some of these cube, uh, prisms with cubes so that you can really ensure for the students that the rule makes sense. So, uh, first we're going to do length, width, and height. So, I'm going to say the, the length is here. Let's call that 5. The width is over here. Let's call that 2. And the height is right here. Let's call that 4. All right. So, now, before we go showing the, the volume, or uh, calculating the volume, um, let's just count the volume instead of just using a rule here. So what we're going to do is, oh, let's say we're first we're going to count all of the cubes on the top floor. I think of this as a building. And I see up here is our first floor, or top floor. Um, so let's count how many cubes are in that top floor. And we've got one right here, and then one in the back, so that's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got ten cubes in that top floor, and this four tells us that we've got four floors. Ten, 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 and ten. So our volume is forty. So we've got, that's pretty straightforward, our volume is forty. Now, teachers, here's where we where, here is where we're going to start guiding our students towards that algorithm, which is well, how did we get ten? Well, we got the ten up here at the top. A nice shortcut, rather than counting all ten of them, would be to do five times two. That gave us the top floor, and then we had to multiply by four because that's how many floors there were all together. So you could think of this as the top floor times by the total number of floors. So that's what we did, basically. So let's practice this. But here's another kind of a cool thing, is you don't always have to think about the floors like a wedding cake going up and down. We could think of this like a loaf of bread and think about it as slices. So first, let's uh, calculate the, or count the dimensions. So the length, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's call that 8. So the length is 8. Let's say the width right over here is 3. And let's say that the height is also 3. Okay. Now, in, before we go finding a rule, let's think about this one. Um, in this case, let's think about it like a um, loaf of bread. So if we want to think about it like a loaf of bread, we might cut our loaf of bread right here, and then we might count our the number of cubes in that one slice of bread. So if we're going to do that, let's count. So we've got one two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, so these, seven, eight, nine. So we've got nine in that slice of bread, and then if we wanted to, now let's count how many slices we have. So we have one here, so one there, one there, going this way, one here going this way. And I'm putting nine because there's nine cubes in each slice of bread. Nine, 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 nine. I sound like the Beatles. Um, and then, so how many nines do we have? We have eight. So that's going to be nine times eight, which is 72. Now, how did we get nine? Let's think about this. Where did that nine come from? 
Well, a nice shortcut for doing that 9 would be 3 times 3. So that's how we got the 9. Is we did 3 times 3. So we could go 3 times 3, and then we multiplied by 8 because that's how many slices there are. So um, and another way to think about this is a slice of bread. So we could think of this as number of cubes in a slice of bread, slice, and then we're going to multiply by the number of slices of bread, right? So there's another way to think of it. So really, in general, what we could think of, we can help students with, oh, by the way, so the answer, I need to write that down, is 72 cubic centimeters. So what we can get students to be thinking about is we can have students think about, there we go, uh, find a layer the size of a layer. All right. Now, in one example, we thought of it like a wedding cake or a, a building, and we, we found the size of that top floor. But in this case, we thought of it as a slice of bread. So we found the size of that one slice of bread. So in both cases, we're basically figuring out the volume of a layer, one layer, and then multiply by the number of layers because all those layers are identical, so you just multiply by the number of layers. So here it is. Um, in general, what we think of is what we say is the algorithm is we generally think of this as size of a layer can be thought of as doing length times width and then you multiply by the height. And I'm writing in cursive on purpose because sometimes my L's look like the number one and I don't want that to <laughs> confuse anybody. So the size of a layer, length times width. How many layers? That's the height. And so our formula for the volume is length times width times height, right here. So if we really want to be official, I would write V, capital V. Capital V equals length times width times height. So let's put that practi into practice. And we've got the volume, and we're being asked to calculate the volume of each rectangular prism. And we're going to remember to include the units in our number sentences. So we remember that length the volume is length times width times height. And so, the length in this case, let's call it, and by the way, parents and teachers, it's not important um, for the students to know which one is length, which one is width, which one is height, because of course, you can always think about this as a, a building, floors, or a wedding cake, or you can think of it as a slice of bread. And so, how we, how we rotate this prism in, the, in space is not important, so... Um, it doesn't matter necessarily which one is at attached to the length, which one is attached to the width, and which one is attached to the height. Um, so we're going to multiply. So in this case, let's just say, oops, let's say length is 8 inches times the width, which is 4 inches, times the height, which is 8 inches. And now we're going to multiply... And so we're going to do 8 times 4 times 8. So it's going to be 8 times 4 times 8. And then it's going to be inches cubed. All right, so 8 times 4 is 32. And so that little piece right there is 32. And then 32 times 8. Well, 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1. So it's 256, um, and then it's inches cubed. So the volume is 256 inches cubed. So what does that mean? That means this rectangular prism has, and I'm going to zoom in, if we were going to draw a cube right there, and then here's another cube right there, and another cube right there. And if we were to build this rectangular prism 
with all of these cubes, it would require 256, 256 cubes to build that rectangular prism. So if we want to try another example, let's go over here. So volume is equal to length times width times height. And we can replace these. So let's call the length, oh, let's call the length 10 meters. The width, let's call it 3 meters. And the height, let's call it 7 meters. And then the volume is going to be 10 times 3 times 7 and it's going to be, oops, meters, meters cubed, because meters times meters times meters, another way to think of it is meters times meters times meters is meters cubed. All right, so now we have 7 times 3, I mean 10 times 3 times 7, so that's going to be, that's an easy one to do in my head, that's 210 meters cubed volume. There's our volume. And the last example, it says calculate the volume of each rectangular prism using the information that's provided. So we know that the face area is 56 square meters and then the height is 4 meters. Well let's draw that. So um, we would have some sort of rectangular prism and we're told that the height from here to here is 4 meters. And we're told that the face area is 56 square meters. So I'm going to assume that what they're talking about, because it's not entirely clear, um, I'm going to assume it's this top one. This top face has a, an area of 56 square meters meters. All right. And then we need to find the volume. So basically what they're saying is in that top layer, that top layer, there's 56. And then they're telling us how many layers are there. They're saying that there's four of them. So there's another layer and then there's two more layers. So there's 56 in the top then 56, then 56, and then 56. So what's the volume? It's going to be, in this case, it's going to be 56 times 4. And so 4 times 6 is 24, carry the 2. 4 times 50 is 200, plus 2, uh, two tens is 22. So it's 224 cubic meters. And why is that? Uh, well, we have... 56 cubes, so I'm going to put M3, 56 cubes in that top layer up here. And then how many layers do we have? We have four layers, so our volume is going to be 224 cubic meters, or meters cubed. And that wraps up Grade 5, Module 5, Lesson 4, where we are using multiplication to, to use that official standard algorithm for calculating volume, which is the volume can be found by length times width times by the height.